You know, we were thrilled to have an opportunity to host this video conference with the Beijing Arbitration Commission. Uh, they are truly special partners uh, and are an august body that is probably the, um, the rising commission uh, among a Chinese uh, arbitration and dispute resolution organizations. The, the whole genesis of our relationship with the Beijing Arbitration Commission is the BAC's creation of a new mediation program. And the Beijing Arbitration Commission realizes that most international dispute resolution bodies, that is, institutions that are set up to deal with cross-border disputes, typically business disputes, um, cannot only provide one service. Uh, they have traditionally provided arbitration services. And what they're saying is, we recognize that if we're dealing particularly with U.S. parties or Western uh, businesses, uh, we want to be able to provide them with a mediation option so that uh, there can be a negotiated result as opposed to going to arbitration. We are uh, especially appreciative of our strong relationship with Madam Wang Hong Song, who is the Secretary General of the Beijing Arbitration Commission. About uh, a year ago, I came to know Madam Wang Hong Song uh, in conjunction with the creation of a Council of Distinguished Advisors here at the Strauss Institute. As I have mentioned, uh, Madam Wang Hong Song is a remarkable person. I think she is a really gifted, uh, perhaps inspired leader, um, and uh, also someone who has a long uh, connection with Pepperdine, which predates her connection with our Strauss Institute. She has been working with uh, the Graduate School of Business uh, here at Pepperdine and actually had our business uh, graduate students going over and assisting uh, uh, with, uh, with issues at the Beijing Arbitration Center, doing case studies and actually uh, offering recommendations uh, about, uh, about various business management issues there. I think it reflects her uh, her very expansive um, uh, idea about how to move an organization forward, particularly an international organization that works with lots of different people. And she's showing many modern uh, management techniques in doing that. Our purpose in talking about uh, mediation in China and the United States was really to try to have a better understanding about the differences not only in the way mediation is conducted but in the very basic premises upon which mediation is founded. Uh, the Strauss Institute for Dispute Resolution here at Pepperdine exists in large part uh, because of the heavy emphasis on mediation here in Southern California and in other parts of the United States. There are certain very defined uses of and concepts of mediation in China. And they're very different from ours. Today in the United States, if you're a business person and you want to mediate, there are literally tens of thousands of qualified business mediators, maybe only a few really good ones, but uh, there are a lot of people and institutions that can help you. Uh, and it, it's relatively simple to find a mediator and go and and have your negotiation facilitated in the way I described. In China, despite the long history of mediation, they don't have precisely that thing. Business mediation as it exists in the U.S. does not currently exist in China. The idea of bringing in outside the court system, outside community centers, and outside the courts, uh, bringing in a mediator in a freestanding process is a unique idea. About uh, five years ago, I was approached by the China Council for the Promotion of International Trade. That's the CCPIT. It's a very large Chinese agency. And of course, they basically are a trade organization. They're there to try to promote, as, as their name suggests, uh, promote trade with other countries to encourage people to do business in China. And their Washington, D.C.-based representatives came to me and said, we, the CCPIT, uh, do sponsor business conciliation in China. Uh, 
what they meant was that they have a lot of little regional uh, centers which resolve a lot of local business disputes between business people, usually rather small. Uh, but that what they were asking was, would we be willing, and I was then heading a, a New York-based dispute resolution organization, said, would you be willing to um, co-sponsor an international business mediation program with us? And although I had many questions, I, of course, jumped at the chance to work with them. Interestingly, um, that program has not produced a lot of actual mediations. Uh, and CCPIT actually has several arrangements like this with organizations in different countries, and they continue to try to encourage businesses to use the system, but it's been difficult to get people to do it. Again, I think it is because, number one, of the lack of a track record, lack of experience in China with this, a lack of understanding about what it is. I think there are also some legal barriers to it. Uh, here in the United States, uh, an agreement to mediate is routinely enforced by courts. Likewise, if you reach a settlement in mediation uh, and you take it to a court, you can normally get that enforced fairly easily uh, like you could any other settlement or contract. Um, so again, we have a system, a framework for handling mediation. They don't have that in China yet. And now that the Beijing Arbitration Commission, which is a a pretty high-profile uh, dispute resolution organization, which does have a, a focus on resolving disputes and which does do some international dispute resolution already, now that it is getting into the act, and also now that I think there's more attention by the Chinese government on the importance of mediation and maybe uh, this new to them a new kind of concept of mediation, uh, we may see a breakthrough. We probably will see some new laws uh, that create a better, uh, more receptive framework for mediation uh, that is a little more consistent with what we in the U.S. are, uh, are um, uh, we normally expect. Our experience with the Chinese has been a tremendous educational experience, and we've learned as much or more than uh, than they have in this process. Uh, I do not know what the ultimate result will be. I don't know where we will come out. Uh, we may come out with some new solutions, something that is not strictly traditional Chinese conciliation and is not strictly U.S.-style modern mediation. There may be co-mediators. There may be an intermingling of styles and strategies. Uh, there may be experimentation for a while until we figure out what works and in what settings. We will be uh, going to Beijing in March to actually do an initial mediation training for a cadre of Chinese mediators. Uh, and we have reviewed the mediation rules that they have put forward. Uh, we are proposing names of mediators uh, for this, uh, this new mediation program. I'm also hopeful that there will be further video conferences like our, the current video conference on mediation. There's much, much more to talk about. We have only scratched the surface, barely scratched the surface uh, in our discussion. Speaking as an educator, again, I cannot believe how rich this experience has been and how delighted I am uh, that we have this relationship.